Hi, I'm Angie Monko, and I'm your holistic divorce and grief coach. And today I want to talk about, are you grieving something? Um, this is a, this is a subject that a lot of us don't want to talk about. We, we don't want to feel grief because there's a lot of pain there. And yet it's something that we all experience and we're all going to go through. And like um, a coach of mine says, her name Shrazad, every single thing that is precious to us, we shall lose. And so it makes sense to figure out how to grieve and look at why it's important to do that. Um, because we will lose everything. And it's a sobering thought, but it's one that is so necessary for our society to address right now. We're in such denial about grief. Uh, why should we honor it when we don't even recognize it? Um, but yet, grieving is necessary and we need to learn how to talk about it. I've heard stories where someone lost someone one day, someone close to them, and the next day they're back at work. No one's talking about grieving. And we don't know what to say to others either. Um, I remember when I lost my daughter and I went back to my network group, um, some people didn't even look at me and they just walked right around me. They, they couldn't make eye contact. What if we were just there for them and just hugged them? Maybe the fewer the words, the better. Just to be with them in our presence and be with them in their pain is the best gift we could give. There are actually 15 different types of grieving. And the one that I probably most relate to is anticipatory grief. I remember the last year before my daughter Maddie died. She died at 22. Uh, and it was this, these memories, I guess, or, or thoughts that came to me was like on her last birthday, oh, this is gonna be the last birthday. Or I held her in the ocean and I thought this is gonna be the last time I hold her in the ocean. Or this is the last four wheeler ride we're gonna take. This is my last birthday. Anticipatory grief is a, a thing. Disenfranchised grief is another kind in which uh, people who've lost children to drug addiction or to suicide or maybe a pet. These are, this is types of grief that other people don't recognize. And so they don't feel like they're being supported as they grieve. The way I see it, there's three main reasons for grieving, but there are many more. Uh, the first one is losing someone or something that you love dearly. Let's face it, there will be a hole in our heart for the rest of our life for that loss. And that's okay. This isn't the time to deny yourself feelings. Be indulgent with your emotions and grieve exactly as you want to and as, as long as you want. And the second is loss of identity. You know, fill in the blank, but um, we wonder who we are without, you know, the job, um, the abuse the caretaking, the religion, the love, whatever that is, but we've lost something in our identity and we've lost that mooring and that grounding and we wonder who we are. We feel listless like upon a sea of uncertainty. We've lost our grounding and who we are. We're not attached, we're not moored to anything that's keeping us feeling solid. Um, the third reason that I see for grieving is feeling deeply abandoned in our soul. Uh, when I was growing up, my parents weren't emotionally available in that my dad abused my mom. And whenever our parents don't feel safe or available to us, if he's hurting her and she, you know, she's being threatened too, so both of them are not safe, then it leaves us feeling like something's wrong with us. And so we do naturally feel abandoned. So why should we grieve? It's because we have to honor what is before we can move on we have to learn how to create a safe space to move on and when we do the grieving work that's what we're doing we're actually creating a space for appreciating what is the next chapter so let's there be there for each other as we grieve so many heartbreaking moments so what is the grieving process i invite you to look over in the notes for more details uh, but 
The first is to activate the part of our brain, we can call it the sage, that is wise and thus create a safe container for doing the healing work. Um, and two, but do this by being present in the moment with touching your fingers together, by breathing, by listening to sounds or sights. Three, investigate our feelings and allow the grief and the pain to come through, inviting the thought and memory. Four, deeply appreciate what's present for us right now. Five, determine what actions needed, if any, as our sage will see what's really going on. Do we need to set a healthy boundary with another person or do we need to go inside and do the deep healing work? I'm here to support you. Um, check out the comments for my next Heal Your Heart retreat and let me support you through this grieving journey. Thank you.